In this lecture, we discuss what the two most important properties of a telescope are, the two basic designs of a telescope, and what it is exactly that astronomers do with telescopes. The two most important properties of a telescope are the light collecting area and the angular resolution. Telescopes with a larger collecting area can gather a greater amount of light in a shorter time, and telescopes that are larger are capable of taking images with greater detail. A telescope's light collecting area tells us how much total light it can collect at one time. Telescopes are generally round, so we usually characterize a telescope size by the diameter of its light collecting surface. You may recall that the area of a circle is equal to pi times the radius of the circle squared. Angular resolution is the smallest angle over which we can tell that two dots or two stars are distinct. The human eye has an angular resolution of about one arc minute. This means that two stars appear distinct only if they are separated by at least an arc minute in the sky. If they are separated by less than an arc minute, our eyes will not be able to distinguish them individually and they will look like a single star. The constellation of Ursa Major, more commonly known as the Big Dipper, has two stars that are relatively close. Alcor and Mizar in the handle of the Dipper are separated by 12 arc minutes. You should be easily able to distinguish these two stars with your eye. The angular separation between two points of light depends on both their actual separation and their distance from us. For example, consider a car in the distance and the same car nearby. The headlights on the car have the same physical separation in both cases, but their angular separation is larger when the car is closer. When the car is far away, we can still see the lights, but they look like one light rather than two. Similarly, two stars separated by a particular distance will have a larger angular separation if they are nearby than if they are farther away. The larger the telescope, the better the angular resolution. The Hubble Space Telescope has an angular resolution of 0.05 arc seconds, which would allow you to read a book from a distance of almost a kilometer. This is 72,000 times better than your eye. Uh, keep in mind though that a smaller number for angular resolution is better. The ultimate limit to a telescope's resolving power comes from the properties of light itself. We talked earlier about how light is an electromagnetic wave. Because it's a wave, beams of light can interfere with one another like overlapping sets of ripples on a pond. This interference limits a telescope's angular resolution even when all other conditions are perfect. This is why even a high quality telescope in space can never achieve perfect angular resolution. Before we move on to telescope designs, I want to say a few words about magnification. Magnification is not the most important function of a telescope. The more you magnify an image, the more you spread out the light you have. If you don't have a lot of light to start with, the magnified image will be dim and blurry. You can only magnify an image so much before it becomes unobservable. The larger the telescope mirror or lens, the more photons you can collect. This potentially allows you to magnify the image more. No matter how much a telescope image is magnified, you won't be able to see the details if the telescope does not collect enough light to show them. Light collecting area and angular resolution are what's important. Telescopes come in two basic designs, refracting and reflecting. A refracting telescope uses transparent glass lenses to collect and focus light. A reflecting telescope uses mirrors. The earliest known working telescopes were refracting telescopes. They appeared in 1608 and the design is credited to German-Dutch spectacle maker Hans Lippersche. Galileo didn't invent the telescope, but he did improve and optimize the design for astronomical observation. Here is a figure showing how a refracting telescope works. The main lens collects the light. The larger the lens, the more light you get. The lens will create an image at the focus. The focal length is the distance from the lens to the focus. An eyepiece is used to magnify the image. The eyepiece has a focal length too. 
The magnification of any telescope is the ratio of the focal length of the main lens over the focal length of the eyepiece. A reflecting telescope uses a precisely curved primary mirror to gather light. This mirror reflects the gathered light to a secondary mirror that lies in front of it. The secondary mirror then reflects the light back to a focus where the eye or the detector can observe it. For a Cassegrain focus, like the one shown here, this is through a hole in the primary mirror. In other designs, like this Newtonian telescope, the focus is through a hole in the side of the tube. It may seem like the secondary mirror in front of the primary would cause problems, but in practice it's not a big deal. Telescopes are focused on very, very distant objects. The secondary is too close to notice, and besides, it only blocks out a very small fraction of light from the primary. Nearly all the telescopes used in current astronomical research are reflectors. Astronomers want the largest telescopes possible, and refracting telescopes are difficult to make large. A lens has to be perfect on both sides, and a mirror only has to be perfect on one side. Also, an enormous, clear, high-quality piece of glass gets very heavy quickly. It used to be that the main factor limiting the size of reflecting telescopes was the sheer weight of the glass needed for the primary mirrors, but new innovations have made it possible to build lighter weight mirrors. For example, thrusters can be placed under a thinner primary mirror to keep the mirror in perfect shape. Some large telescopes, like the 10-meter Keck scopes in Hawaii, use segmented mirrors and thrusters. The Keck telescopes are two of the largest telescopes on Earth. Each telescope has 36 smaller mirror segments that fit together to make a mirror with a 10-meter diameter. Larger telescopes are in the planning or construction stages. You may be wondering what exactly astronomers do with these enormous telescopes. There are three basic categories of observations, imaging, spectroscopy, and time monitoring. We are accustomed to images in visible light, but astronomers study celestial phenomena at all wavelengths, from low energy radio and infrared to high energy x-rays and gamma rays. Images made with light at wavelengths outside the visible do not have any natural color because color is a property of visible light. To display images that are not visible, astronomers use color coding. For example, the Crab Nebula is shown here in radio, infrared, ultraviolet, and x-ray light. All of these images are false color. In the previous chapter, we learned about how spectra are used to determine chemical composition, temperature, and motion. Spectroscopy is an important and frequently used tool for the astronomer. Many celestial phenomena vary with time. For example, some stars undergo sudden outbursts, most stars vary in brightness, and some objects will vary periodically. Small periodic changes in a star's brightness can reveal the presence of an orbiting object. This is, in fact, how the Kepler mission has detected hundreds of extrasolar planets. That's all for now. Perhaps you'll be able to make it to one of our observatory guest nights this semester and look through an actual telescope with me. Take care. I will talk to you again soon.